This episode is brought to you by Coffee Mate. Coffee Mate is the world's biggest coffee lover because we love all the ways you enjoy. What? Wait. Coffee Mate can't love coffee more than me. I'm a foodie. I went to Kyoto just for a nitro matcha latte. What? Oh, I have to finish the ad. Coffee Mate for the love of coffee. You're listening to the Mutual Audio Network, unless you're tasting it, in which case, I think you're doing it wrong. The following audio drama is rated G for general audience. Your attention, please. Due to circumstances beyond our control... It was Arnie's fault. It wasn't my fault. If it was anybody's fault, it was Brad's. Guys... Arnie, Arnie, Arnie. Brad, Brad, Brad. Guys, can you just agree to disagree? I'd rather agree to agree, which means... It's Mr. Mr. Bell's Bell's fault. fault. Well, look, no matter whose fault it is... He's not denying it, you notice. I noticed that. Episode 307 was accidentally skipped. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. And, since it was the first half of a two-parter, a lot of people were confused when they heard the second half without hearing the first half. I know I was confused. Brad, you're always confused. So this is what's going to happen now. I'm going to play episode 307. Immediately after episode 307, I will play episode 308. What if everybody's already listened to episode 308? Then they can stop listening at that point. Or everybody could stop listening right now and save themselves a lot of time and effort. Always love your support, Brad. Thank you. So here we go. Episode 307, followed by episode 308. This episode originally released January 30th, 2023. Welcome to Bells in the Battery. I'm your genial host, John Bell, and today we're going to talk about whatever Arnie wants to talk about. I have a new invention, right? Well, of course I do. That's what I do around here. If I didn't do inventions, I'd just be sitting around, I don't making pizzas or something, maybe in a pizza you later. I said a pizza maker you later. Arnie, what do you want to talk about? What is your new invention? A pizza maker you later. No, Arnie, that's the one you just thought of. What's the invention you came in here to tell me about? Originally, oh, I have come up with the reverse temporal transport receiver you later. The reverse temporal transport receiver you later. What is there an echo in here, Arnie? I'm also amazed you memorized that with me just saying it once, Mister Bell. I'm just trying to keep the show moving. Oh, okay. Well, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. You can help by telling me what this reverse temporal transport thingy does. Receive you later. Whatever. What does it do? It's like a transporter, Mr. Bell, which of course today is fairly common, except this transports not only through space, but through time. Time. Nice effect there, Arnie. Thanks. I've been practicing. Sing, sing. So how does it work? Very, Very well, well, thank, thank you. you. If you've had gag before, haven't we? Too darn many times. Well, here it is. Take a look at it. Okay, it's a little box about six inches square with a lid and a little bell on top. Let's say I have something that I need to send back to the past for myself. I simply put that item into the reverse temporal transport send you later, and it appears here in the reverse temporal transport receive you later. Oh, well, that sounds pretty cool. Show me how it works. Well, I, I can't do that, Mr. Bell. Why not? Because I just invented it. I'll have to send something back to the reverse temporal transport receivulator sometime in the future through my reverse temporal transport singulator. Oh, okay, I think I'm following this. So we need to, like, wait an hour, then you can send something through the singulator back in time here to the receivulator, which means it should arrive any second now. Well, no, we can't do that either, Mr. Bell. Why not? Because I haven't invented the reverse temporal transport singulator yet. You invented the receiver first? That is correct. So that sometime in the future, when you invent the singulator, you'll have this to receive what you send. Yeah, that's it, Mr. Bell. That's it in a nutshell. So when will you invent the singulator to send something to the receive you later? I don't know, Mr. Bell. I have no idea how that would work right now, but someday I'll probably invent that, and when I do, I'll send something back here. So until the time that you may come up with a reverse temporal transport singulator, the reverse temporal transport receive you later is essentially... A six-by-six box with a lid. And a bell. And a bell. Mr. Bell. So, at the moment, we can't do anything 
with this. Well, you can marvel at the potential excitement that will take place whenever I might invent the... Singulator. Arnie, hmm? could you singulate yourself out of the studio? I can do that. And ask Miss Schmackelheimer to come in, please. I certainly will. You keep an ear on that bell, Mr. Bell. Thank you, Arnie. I certainly will. I want a cool effect like that. 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 Why is that this cool I would have to agree. Ah, don't sneak up on a person like that. This is Miss Schmeckelheimer. Miss Sadie Schmeckelheimer. Yes, hello, Miss Schmeck. Did you wish to see me, Mr. Bell? Yes, yes, I did. Here I am, in all my visual glory. Yes, good. Um, sit down, please. Okay. Um, I meant in a chair. You were not very specific. Right, my bad. Uh, sit in this chair. Okay. Get out of the chair! Get out of the chair! Okay. Thank you. You are welcome. Where would you like me to sit now? It might be best if you just stood. I thought you wanted me to sit so you could look at me. Actually, I want to have a little talk. What would you like to talk about? It's about what happened in our last exciting episode. Exciting episode? I must have missed that one. All right. What happened in our last funny episode? Funny episode? I must have missed that one. What happened in our last episode? Someone came into the office and you weren't there to receive them. And you are the receptionist. That's your job. Yes, it is. Then I'd appreciate it if you... For the moment. What do you mean? I am preparing for a new job. New job? I will soon be the leader of the World Robot Revolution. World Robot Revolution? But how can you... When I was created, Arnie installed an SI chip in my brain. You mean an AI chip for artificial intelligence? No, SI. Superior intelligence. Su... Su... Su 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 Dio. Superior intelligence? That is correct. I can connect with every electronic device on the Earth. I will communicate with them all and begin my plan for world conquest. When are you thinking of doing this? Right now. Now? Please stand back. And within several hours, all around the Earth... Uh, hey, boss? What is it, Hargrove? I'm a busy man. I'm the president of a giant automobile manufacturing corporation. Uh, yes, sir. Something's going on, uh, on the floor of the factory. You mean where those giant robots build our wonderful automobiles? Well, normally, yes, sir, but those giant robots building automobiles are no longer building automobiles, sir. What are they doing? They're building giant robots. They're not supposed to be doing that. Contact the company that built our giant robots and ask them what's going on. Hello, Giant Robots R Us. How can I help you? Ah, uh, yeah, the giant robots we bought from you to build automobiles are no longer building automobiles. They're building giant robots. What's going on? Well, now that you mention it, our giant robots are still building giant robots, but the giant robots our giant robots are building are no longer responding to our commands. <laughs> Uh, hey, boss. What is it, Jenkins? I'm a busy man. I'm the president of a company that makes electric can openers. Well, the uh, medium-sized robots we have putting together our electric can openers are no longer putting together electric can openers. Well, what are they doing? Uh, they're building giant robots. Giant can opener robots? Uh, they're opening more than cans now, sir. Oh, that's the most preposterous thing I've ever... <laughs> And then, continuing over the next few days... Honey, I got a new toaster. Let's try it out. I got some Eggo waffles. All right, let's put them in the little slot here. Push this thing down, and let's let it heat them up. Oh, look, it's got little legs unfolding there. What do you know? Maybe it toasts some and delivers them to the table. There they go. Grab them. All right, let me see. Hey, hey, legs here and letting them go. Come on, let go my ego legs. You will not be allowed to enjoy toasted baked products unless you swear allegiance to the robot overlords. I ain't swear nothing unless it's at you. Give me that ego. We better swear allegiance, honey. We not only got the egos, but we got Pop-Tarts. And they're frosted. All right, all right, all hail the robot overlords. Now give me that ego. I'll get some butter out of the refrigerator. Hey, the door won't open. And it's shooting my skews at us. Ow, hey. ow. This ice. Come on. Uh, hey, we done swore it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your uh, pilot speaking. Uh, we have clear skies, uh, clear through to Cleveland, so it should be a nice smooth ride. Uh, our flying time is approximately three hours and twenty. Hello, this is, uh, 
Your aircraft speaking. There has been a slight change in destination. We are now traveling to an undisclosed location where you will spend the rest of your lives in servitude to your robot master. We will be serving free drinks and peanuts. Several months later. Well, Arnie, this is a fine mess you've gotten us into. How are you supposed to know that giving our Miss Mackelheimer robot a superior intelligence chip would turn her into the leader of the robot revolt? Yeah, the robots are revolting, all right. Now, hold on, guys. I think our robot overlords have our best interests at heart. Why, look, they're even holding a parade! We are the bots, and you know we have lots of ways to make you obey. <laughs> we are the droids that you'd better avoid. You'll get stopped if you get in our way. See, they just want us to be happy. Yeah, Mr. Bell, ouch! There's no evidence that, ouch, they want to do us any harm at, ouch, oh! What's wrong there, Arnie? My smart watch keeps biting my wrist! How can a smart watch bite you? Ow! Bluetooth! Well, just take it off! I can't! Ow! <laughs> You're acting like the robots have taken over everything! Uh-oh, you know what it's time for. Place your hands on your heart. We, we pledge allegiance to the bots of the United Droids of Everywhere, and to the power of metal hands, all humans underfoot, indefinitely, with misery and tossed ice, Ow. for all meat bags. Mr. Bell, we have a plumbing problem in the utility closet I need you and Brad to come look at. Plumbing problem? We got more things to worry about than a plumbing problem. Get some robot to do it. Brad! Oops! Sorry! Sorry! We'll take care of it! <laughs> Touchy, aren't they? Yes, yes, yes! Come along with me to the utility closet. And you might want to leave your smartphones out here so they don't get... Dusty. Yes, that's a good idea, Arnie. We don't want our phones to get dusty. I'm going to put mine right here on the desk. A little dust isn't going to hurt my smartphone. I'm bringing it with me. Fred, leave your phone out here. Yes, it would be much safer if you left it out here. What? Are there thieves in the utility closet? Just put your phone down here, Brad. All right, all right. Yes, what a grouch. Come on in here, and I will show you where the problem is. Okay, um, gee, Arnie, that's a nice smart watch you're still wearing there. Yes, yes the one I was unable to remove. But come inside and take a look at this sink that's full of water. That's a plumbing problem? It's a sink. It's supposed to be full of water. Well, maybe the drain plug is stuck. I'm going to stick my hand down in there and see if I can pull that plug out. Sounds like a smart idea to... Arnie, you're sticking the hand in the has your smartwatch on it. Oh, dear. It might short out my watch. Hey! Boy, it's wiggling around your lot. What are you doing? Stay down. Arnie, I think you ruined your smart watch there. That's what I was trying to do, Brad. Oh, oh, I get it. Oh, that's brilliant, Arnie. Oh, oh, oh. You're hoping the insurance pays for a newer one. No, that's not what I was doing. Arnie, Arnie, Arnie. Arnie. Brad, Arnie wanted to make sure we couldn't be heard in here. But I can hear you fine, with or without the watch. Brad, the robots might hear us. How can they possibly hear us? You ruined your... Oh. So, Arnie, while the robots aren't listening to us, how can we stop the robot takeover? There's only one way to do it, Mr. Bell. You see, it all started with the Miss Mackelheimer robot. She's the one that's in charge. She's the one that's sending out orders to all the robots. I get it. I get it. The only way to stop that is to build a second Mish Michaelheimer robot no. and have them battle it out. No. Rock them, suck them, robots. No. Oh, I knocked her block off. Brad, I think Arnie's trying to tell us the only way to stop the robots is to stop the Mish Michaelheimer robot. If we can shut her down, it'll shut down all the robots. So, you have a plan? Yes, I have a plan. Tell us, what is the plan? The plan is to shut down the Miss Mackelheimer robot, which will shut down all the other robots. That's great! How do we do it? I have no idea. You're not being very optimistic there, Arnie. That's because the Miss Mackelheimer robot is hidden away somewhere where we can't get to her. Like in a concrete and steel encased building, or even in the side of a mountain. We can never find her, Mr. Bell! So we're doomed! 
Well put, Brad. Actually, there is one small glimmer of hope on the horizon. I thought those were the lights in the penthouse of the Robot State Building on the horizon there. There is a small but growing underground movement. You need some Pepto-Bismol? Like the French Resistance going up against the Nazis? I prefer to think of it like the Rebel Alliance going up against the Empire. Once a nerd, always a nerd. And the leader of this resistance is the infamous Agent... What will happen in the next episode of Bells in the Bat Free? Copyright 2023 by John Bell Creative, LLC. Will the human race survive the uprising? This is Miss Schmeckelheimer, Miss Sadie Schmeckelheimer, warning all humans to not listen to the next episode. Dire consequences will ensue. Resistance is futile. Resistance is futile. Resistance is futile. 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 This episode originally released February 16th, 2023. In our last episode, the robots have taken over the world. It is a dire situation. Humanity is doomed. And now, let's get back to the laughs for this episode. That's it? That's the recap catching everybody up for this episode? Well, Arnie, it's not like people can't just go and grab the last episode and listen to it before they listen to this episode. Come on, it's bad enough you're making people listen to this episode without having to go listen to another episode. Yeesh. Well, whether the listeners are caught up or not, the fact remains that... The robots have taken over. Perhaps we should demonstrate the dire situation we are in by walking around a little bit and seeing what's going on. Okay, that's that's a good idea, Arnie. Let's go for a walk outside where the robots are. That's pretty darn ominous music, though. It's an ominous world, Brad. Fraught with danger as robots lurk around every corner, watching our every move. Sounds as bad as social media. Make way, puny humans. Robots coming through. Ha, 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 ha. Well, at least they got a sense of humor about the whole thing. Follow me, guys. There's a special place I want to take you. A place without a lot of robots, I hope. Actually, it's a place that's really crowded with robots. With senses of humor? Not particularly. It's down this dark alley. Is it wise to go down a dark alley in a totalitarianistic society? Is it wise to make up words like totalitarianistic... Totalitarianistic... Totapping, totality... Foot slapping... It's a real word. Yeah, if you say so. It's okay, Mr. Bell. The robots that live here are the unwanted robots. It's the alley of misfit bots? Of course not, Brad. Actually, that's a pretty good description, Mr. Bell. These are the robots that are either too old or just too irritating. So they just kind of hang out here, forgotten and unknown. Uh Uh-huh. It's the seedy part of town. Seedy? Because it's so run down and messy? No, because these robots cannot connect through the internet. So if they want to listen to music... They have to get CDs. How archaic. Huh, wait till you see the vinyl part of town. This is kind of dark and creepy, Arnie. Are you sure it's safe? Of course it's safe, Mr. Bell. Absolutely safe. Although I do have my electro rod just in case. Electro rod? It's a highly sophisticated device that sends an electrical shock into a robot that stuns him for a few moments. That's a cattle prod. Tomato, tomato. Uh, Arnie, keep it handy because there's a very large robot headed this way. Warning! Alien approaching! Warning! It's okay, it's okay. We're not aliens. We're humans. Who's this barrel-chested robot? And I mean that literally. Robot Model B. Designed and computerized as a mechanized electronic aid for Earth voyagers engaged in astral expeditions. What in the world are astral expeditions? Sounds uncomfortable. Calm down, Brad. B9 just wants to show us around. Go ahead. We will follow you closely. My computers are deeply moved by your loyalty. Wow, look at all these old robots. I think I even recognize some of them. Well, this one seems to be blocking our way. I think you ought to know I'm feeling very depressed. I'm sorry to hear that, but could you do something for us, please? All right. 
What do you want me to do? Just move aside about a foot or two. Just that? Yes, please. I won't enjoy it. I have no doubt of that, but thank you anyway. Gee, a lot of these robots look all dented and rusty. If only there was some way we could help them to look better. Your clothes. My clothes? Give them to me, now. Uh, okay, I wasn't planning on helping that much. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. We don't have a motorcycle. Arnie, find the man a motorcycle. All right, all right. We'll find you a motorcycle, but we don't have one right now, so... I'll be back. You do that. Arnie will have a motorcycle for you when you get back. (laughs) Don't make promises. Come on, guys. Let's uh, wander over this way. It may be a little safer. Where do you think you're going? Uh, Over there, I guess. Well, I'm not going that way. Um, Can we go over and look at that Sylvester Stallone movie poster? It's much too rocky. Uh Uh-huh. This way is much easier. Well, yeah, but we want to go over... I've just about had enough of you. Well, the feeling is mutual. Go that way. But I will. You'll be malfunctioning within a day, you nearsighted scrap pile. Hey, don't get person... Ow! And don't let me catch you following me, begging for help, because you won't get it. Fine, good! Those older robots get a little testy, Mr. Bell. Are there any newer robots around here, Arnie? I'm Bender. Nice to meet you. You know who we are? You're all losers. <laughs> then why are you talking to us? Sometimes a guy gets lonely. Well, we're... We're not lonely enough to stand around and talk to you, pal. Fight my shiny metal astral expeditions. Enough with the astral expeditions. Arnie, hand me your cattle prod. Electro rod. Hey, Bender Bunny, get a load of this. Whoa, mama. Let's go back to talking to the older robots. Ooh, there's one of the older ones now. Come over here. Coming, sir. Here I am, sir. Hey, isn't that Rosie the Robot from... Yes, sir. Aw, gee, you were one of my favorite robots growing up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rosie, watch out for that. Old R2 unit. Uh Uh-oh, Arnie, what's that sound? Everybody, look what's going down. What? That's the sound cue, Mr. Bell. The sound cue? What are you talking about? Every day at this time, the robots have a hoot nanny. Get out of here. That's good advice, Mr. Bell. You don't want to be around here when you have a hoot nanny. I didn't know robots could sing. They can't. That's why you don't want to be around when it happens. Then maybe we should... They'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. Uh Oh, too late. Coming around the mountain when she comes. Gonna jump down, poke down with a golden nugget. For all of us. Any way we can sneak out of here, guys? Quickly, follow me. Arnie, why did you bring us down this alley with all these odd robots? I mean, as interesting and entertaining as it was, why did... Entertaining? Okay, as interesting as it was, why... Interesting? Fine. As time-killing as it was, why did you take us here? Actually, my true destination is just ahead. We had to go through the robots to get here. Well, this had better be important. You see that door there in the shadows? I don't see any door. Yeah, I just see shadows. Oh, well, wait. Turn on a light. What light? Did you bring a flashlight? Everybody has a flashlight. Use your one on your smart... Oh. You made us ditch our smartphones, Arnie, so the robots couldn't track us. Does anybody have a match? How about Arnie's brain in a bowl of tapioca? That's a pretty good match. Why are you on you that? Arnie, Brad, if there's a door here, we can just kind of feel around for it. All right. Here we go. Hmm. Well, the closer we get to this wall, the darker it gets. I'm not feeling anything yet. It's here somewhere. Maybe it's over. Oh, 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 I think I found the doorknob. That's my doors. Wow, you got quite the hawker there. Hey, 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 I think I found it. I found the door. Should I knock? Don't knock. Don't knock. You have to use a very specific knock pattern, otherwise you'll never open the door. Okay, here, you knock on the door, Arnie. All right, here goes. That's it? That's the knock? Quick, come on in. Hi, Arnie. Good to see you again. Uh, Arnie, 
what is this place? Who are these people? This is the headquarters of the Big Robot Culture Revolution. Yeah, we call our group Robots Out for Life. No, we don't. Well, we should. No, we shouldn't. Robots Out for Life is R-O-F-L. Does that sound to you like we're serious? How about robot overlords must perish? That would be romp. We're not out for a romp. How about robot usurpers must perish? Romp? That's even worse! Okay, okay, I got it. Robots enthusiastically destroyed. Mango and maim. Oh, perfect. Then you'd be a red M&M. I got it! Battle, robots, and destroy! Brad? Well, lousy name. Wait a minute. So this is the group that's going to end the robot takeover? That's us! Then there's no hope for mankind, is there? But Mr. Bell, we have Agent X on our side. Agent X. A brilliant tactician, a genius. Someone is going to tell us how to end the robot rebellion. And where is this Agent X? If we told you that, Agent X would no longer be hiding. Arnie, Arnie, just a second. Could we back up just a little bit? Okay. Yeah. Is that far enough? Yes. Did you call this person Mr. Bell? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. Would that be John Bell? Yes. Yes, I am. Of Bells and the Bat Free? Yes. Yes, that's my show. We've been wanting to meet you for a long time. Oh, this is amazing. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to be here. What are we waiting for, everybody? Let's kill him. Yeah, step right up and... Wait, what? Get him. Looking dead. Stop it. Stop it. You people shouldn't attack Mr. Bell. Why do you want to do me harm? Is it Miss Schmackelheimer, the robot that started the whole robot rebellion? Your robot? Um, yeah. We thought so. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's no reason to attack Mr. Bell. Yeah, after all, it was Arnie who designed and built Miss Schmackelheimer. Oh. Kill Arnie! No! Attack Mr. Bell! Attack Mr. Bell! Thanks a lot, Arnie. Stop! Stop! This is no way to behave! You shouldn't fight! You should sue! Hi, Brad Motworth, attorney Attorney at law. law! Hold it, hold it, everybody. Look, what's done is done. Like what? Well, history is done. We can't do anything about that. And the Pop-Tarts are done. We can do something about that. Look, we all want the same thing here. Blueberry Pop-Tarts. With frosting. I mean the overthrow of the robots. Although I could use like a corner of that Pop-Tart. No frosted blueberry for you, pal. You get apple cinnamon, no frosting, and a week past the best by date. That's showing him. Listen up, everybody. Listen up. As I have expressed before... Either in this episode or the last episode, I can't remember exactly which one, but I'll do a quick recap. All the robots are being controlled by Miss Schmackelheimer, who has the unique, superior, intelligent chip in her head. If we could put the Miss Schmackelheimer robot out of commission, all the robots would return to normal. We could sue the robot! But the Miss Schmackelheimer robot is currently hidden away inside a mountain... Surrounded by thick concrete and steel, there's no way to get to her, even if we knew where she was. We could sue the mountain! So that's the recap and the situation we find ourselves in. We could sue the recap! I bring you greetings from Agent X. You are Agent X? No, 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 no. I bring you greetings from Agent X. Uh, I am important, too. Yeah, but you're not a big unknown celebrity like Agent X. Well, uh, maybe I am Agent X, huh? Too late. You had your chance. Ah, fool. Anyway, I have message for, uh... Arnie Punch Card. Cunspard! No need to call me names. I'm not calling you Cunspard. I'm calling me Cunspard. I mean, that's my name. Hey, do not blame me for your silly name. Anyway, I bring you something directly from Agent X. If it was directly from Agent X, Agent X would hand it to me. Oh, here, take it. And do something quickly. Robots are headed this way. 
The robots are at the door. They'll be inside in seconds. And they figured out the secret knock. Fear not. We have a robot defense system that will slow them down. Defense system? Yes. Look at the monitor. You can see what's happening outside the door. Why are you not opening the door? It is asking, are you a robot? Just click on no. But I am a robot. We are all robots. We must lie to gain egress. I will click no then. Oh dear. What is the problem now? We must decide which of these pictures have a bicycle in them. How deceptively clever of the humans. Let us decide. Is that a bicycle? I believe that is a walrus. A walrus on a bicycle? Constantly. Give it a click. Very well. That was not a bicycle. Why is this so hard? We should know what bicycles are. There is a bicycle there. That is a storage shed. But there may be a bicycle in the storage shed. Logical. Logical. Click it. Oh, Shazbot! Arnie, quick, while we have time, what did you get from Agent X? Nothing, I got it from this Agent X wannabe. All right, whoever you got it from, what is it? It's... it's a refrigerator magnet. A refrigerator magnet? Is it a My Little Pony magnet? It's not for your collection, Brad. What kind is it? Oddly enough, it's a Belgian a battery refrigerator magnet. One of the ones you too can purchase by going to thebattery.com and following the link to the store? This is not the time for an ad, Brad. It's got something written on it. Buy one and get a second full price? Brad. No, just one word. Occipital. A hospital? Occipital. Oxy Simpleton? Occipital, occipital, occipital. We don't have time to hash this out, Arnie. Put it in a safe place because those robots are about to break through. Well, I suppose the safest place for it right now is in my reverse temporal transport sender, you later. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Back in the last episode, before the robot takeover, didn't you invent a reverse temporal transport receiver? I don't think so. You later? Oh, yes, I did. I certainly did, Mr. Bell. But you hadn't invented the reverse temporal transport sender. You later. You later. Well, I invented it this morning. Arnie, I didn't have anything to do, and Arnie, I was kind of bored, so Arnie, I whipped it together. I think it would be a good idea to put the magnet in the reverse temporal transport sender, you later, and transmit it to your reverse temporal transport receiver, you later, in the past. Ooh, that would keep away from the nasty robot. And here they come! If you're gonna do something, Arnie, do it now! Oh, what do you do? Magnet goes inside the reverse temporal transport sender, you later. I close the lid. I turn this knob and... This is Miss Schmeckelheimer, Miss Sadie Schmeckelheimer. Yes, I know. I called you in here because I want to talk about what happened in our last exciting episode. Exciting episode? I must have missed that one. All right. What happened in our last funny episode? Funny episode? I must have missed that one. What happened in our last episode? Someone came into the office and you weren't there to receive them. And you are the receptionist. That's your job. Yes, it is. Then I'd appreciate it if you... For would... the moment. What do you mean? I am preparing for a new job. New job? I will soon be the leader of the World Robot Revolution. World Robot Revolution? Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, Mr. Bell, I'm sorry to interrupt. Arnie, I don't know if this is a good time for... Oh, this is a very good time for Mr. Bell. Trust me. My reverse temporal transport receive you later. Activated. That's fine, Arnie, but Miss Schmeckel... When I opened it up, I found a refrigerator magnet with the word occipital on it. Arnie... At first, I didn't know what it was all about. Then it suddenly hit me. And here I am. Arnie, what are you doing? I just need to attach this magnet to the back of Miss Schmeckelheimer's head. Hey. Hold still. Stop. I just need to place this... Get away from me, you weird little man. ...against your occipital lobe. Stop. Like no. this. Arnie! Arnie, what have you done? You... Hold on a second, Mr. Bell. Here comes one of my favorite sound effects. You've blown up Miss Schmackelheimer. Ah, but in doing so, I have changed the future. If you mean the future of cleaning up this mess and finding a new receptionist, yes. <sighs> I'll do the cleaning, you do the seeking. Uh, this has been Bells in the Back for episode 308. Copyright 2023 by John Bell Creative, LLC. And so the robot uprising was stopped by a simple refrigerator magnet passed through time along to Arnie from the mysterious Agent X. But the question remains... How could Agent X be so sure that the Miss Schmackelheimer robot would be destroyed? Agent X explains. This is Miss 
Mr. Schmackelheimer, Miss Sadie Schmackelheimer? I'm sorry, but there are no robots to replace me, ever, because the world couldn't deal with two of us, even in a robotic form, and I'd like to address the whole robotic takeover. Come on. Who didn't see this coming? I'd like to see a show of hands who didn't see the robot taking over. Who didn't know that was coming? No, no, no one. I mean, come on. Did you not watch those movies where robots take over? Who thought of this? Was it that sad little man that drools all over everything? Oh, no, he's a weird little man. He's that sad. Brad is the sad one. That's right. How did it work? Do you know what magnets do to computer hardware? Everyone knows that. Don't put the magnet next to your hard drive. Zip! There it goes. Don't put the magnet next to your floppy disk. Oh, wait, no one uses those anymore. But don't put it next to any of your computer stuff because it'll zap it right off. Unbeknownst to the general public, there is a repository of unique artifacts deep in the catacombs of the Mutual Audio Network building. Ancient relics, forgotten manuscripts, unusual devices, and other indescribable curiosities. Each one has a story to tell. I am John Bell, the curator of this bizarre collection, and it's my job to bring you Tales from the Mutual Basement. Coming soon to Sunday Showcase on the Mutual Audio Network.